welcome to this absolutely awesome lesson on introduction to trigonometry. Okay, now most people believe that when Jesus said that hell is prepared for the devil and his angels, he actually referred to the person who invented trigonometry and all the teachers that teach it. So the hell is prepared for those people. Now there's two important reasons why I think that's absolutely false. The first reason is that um, trigonometry was not invented by one person. It has been in use and being developed over the past 4,000 years and it's just absolutely awesome and, and that's where I get to my second reason because the second reason is that this is definitely one of God's most brilliant inventions um, and that is trigonometry. Now trigonometry simply means triangle measure. Okay, so trigonon means triangle, triangle, and then I'm sure you can see metri, okay, that just means measure, okay, triangle measure. Now triangles exist all over the place, so that for the past 4,000 years, trigonometry has been in use in areas such as astronomy, okay, navigation, estimation, construction, and a whole load of other things, so that today it is being used in more than 30 different fields, okay, with, even including fields like biology and, would you believe, music. It's absolutely brilliant. So what's all the fuss about? What is it about triangles that is so cool, cool to study? Well, it actually comes down to this, is that when we have two similar triangles, so here I have a triangle, okay, and a similar triangle would be a triangle that that has not the same shape, well the same shape, yes, um, but actually the same angles, okay, so if I have an even larger triangle here, okay, that's two similar triangles because all of their angles are the same. So let's say that's 30 degrees, okay, and that one is 30 degrees, and this is 90 degrees and 90 degrees. Now these two are two similar triangles. Now you might say, okay, but how do you know the third one is also the same? Well, hopefully somewhere in your brain you got stuck that the interior angles all add up to 180 degrees. Now that is only true in Euclidean geometry. That means on a flat surface. Okay, so if this is 30 and that's 90, that brings me up to 120, which means that one must be 60 to bring me up to 180. So these are two similar triangles and you can see one thing about them is that they're not the same size. This one is clearly larger as the other one. But one thing that you can know is that if we take the ratio of any two sides, the ratio of these two triangles and the ratio of the corresponding sides would be the same. So what do I mean? Okay, so let's assume that, that this is what we are going to call our observed angle. Observed angle. Now, the only reason why I call it the observed angle is because I'm going to name the sides relative to this angle. So for example, that side I'm going to call the opposite side. And this side, okay, let me write it out, opposite. And this side I am going to name the um, adjacent. Okay, and it's not really me that named it, it is that guy that invented it, you know. <laughs> okay, and this slanted side, hypotenuse. This slanted side is called the hypotenuse. Now the slanted side is always the side that is across from that 90 degrees. So we're going to keep our study to 90 degree triangles and that they are called right angled triangles. So right angle triangles or right triangles. Okay, we're going to keep our study focused to them. And now this one would obviously be named in a similar fashion. That's the 30 degrees is my observed angle. This is the opposite side. Okay. Opposite adjacent and the hypotenuse. 
Okay, now I did say that these two are two um, have different sizes. So, for example, this opposite side length, the length from from the bottom to the top for this triangle, might be three units. Okay, and this one might be four units. Okay, you can see it's it's longer. But if I take the ratio of any two sides, okay, so for example, this side and that side. So if this one is 3, then that one will be 6. Now I'll explain to you just now why I know that that is true. If this one is 4, that side length would be 8. Okay. Now you might just say, well, how do you know that? How do you? That's the cool thing about uh, trigonometry is that it gives us the tools to know things like that. But what I want to show you, and, and you can go and test this, take a 30 degree um, angle, draw any size that you want, measure the opposite length and divide it with the hypotenuse. Okay, so what you notice is that the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Okay, for triangle 1, let's call it triangle 1, we have 3 divided by 6 and for triangle 2 we have 4 divided by 8 but for both of them they simplify to a half. You see that? Okay. This one is just 1 over 2 and that one is simply 1 over 2 so that they are the same. Okay. Now obviously it's going to be different if I change these uh, the angle here. Okay. If I change this angle it would be different. Okay. But for a 30 degree triangle so if we had to associate, okay, let's call it like this, associate the opposite over the hypotenuse for 30 degrees, then I would always get an answer of a half. No matter how big you, answer, you, you draw this thing, if you go and measure the opposite side length and you divide it with the hypotenuse, you'll get a half, okay, for sure. In other words, the ratio stays constant no matter how big the... A triangle as long as I always use a 30 degree triangle okay now for a 45 degree triangle it would be different it won't be a half anymore it would be something else okay but all 45 degrees if I take the opposite divided by hypotenuse I'll always get the same answer okay now this because and this is the same okay so we get different type of ratios I just measured opposite over the hypotenuse Okay, I could also put the opposite divided by the adjacent. Okay, and I'll always get the same answer for 30 degrees. Okay, it's a little bit uglier answer, so I'm not going to do it. Okay, but I'll always get the same answer. If I take opposite over adjacent, and I associate it with a specific angle. Okay, for, let's call it for angle theta. Opposite over hypotenuse, hypotenuse will always be the same for the same angle. Opposite over adjacent will always be the same. What else can I compare? Well, I can compare the adjacent and the hypotenuse with each other. Okay. Now, because they always have the same answer, we give them a specific name. Okay. This one, for example, is called sine. Okay. Sine is the ratio of the opposite and the hypotenuse. The opposite and the adjacent is called the tangent. Okay. We call it a tangent. Okay. And the adjacent over the hypotenuse is called the cosine. The cosine. You'll learn later why it's that little co in front of the sine, okay? But that's the cosine. And because for every theta we get a unique answer, we have a function. In other words, I have something like this, that sine of theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. See how I um, shorten that? And tan of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. And cos, okay, cos stands for cosine, is of theta is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So when I have something like this, what I'm actually saying, I'm actually asking the angle a question. Okay, so if I have something like sine of 30 degrees, I'm asking sine of 30 degrees, what is the ratio, what answer do I get if I take your opposite side length and I divide it with the hypotenuse? 
and the answer is always a half. Okay. In other words, the opposite compared to the hypotenuse is the opposite is half of the hypotenuse always. Okay. Always for what? Always for 30 degrees. Okay. Let's look at another example similar to that and look at tan, for example. Okay. So let's take 45 degrees. Okay. So there's a triangle. And to the best of my ability, I want to make that one a 45 degree triangle. Okay. And this one would also be 45 because 45 and 45 gives me 90 and 90 gives me 180. Now, maybe you have this un intuitive idea that if this is 45 degrees, okay, or actually this you should know is that when I have angles that are the same, the corresponding or the opposite side lengths will all also have the same uh, length, okay? So, for example, if this one is un it has a length of 2, then that one has a length of 2, okay? And you have an intuitive idea of, well, that, that seems true. If the angles are the same, then the sides that correspond to them uh, should also be the same. So, what do we notice if we take tan of 45? Five degrees. So tan says, okay, let's take the opposite and divide it with the adjacent. So there's opposite, 2 divided by 2. Okay, but let's not make it 2. Let's make it any number. Okay, for any number we can use something like x. Okay, okay then if that one is x, since these are opposite sides, it means this one is also x. So if I take tan of 45, I will always have x divided by x, or 2 divided by 2, or 10 divided by 10, or whatever, but I'll always get the answer 1, okay? So that if 45 went into an interview with Tan, Tan would ask him, okay, 45 degrees, so what ratio do we get when we take your opposite and we divide it with your adjacent? And he would say, well, a ratio of 1, which means they are the same. They will always be the same because it's one to one. Okay. Um, I hope that made it clear, more or less. Cos, very similar to sine and tan, of course. Uh, just comparing two different values. So cos would say the adjacent, that's x, over the hypotenuse, which is that value. So in the next video, we get to the theorem of Pythagoras. And in there, you also learn a very, very cool theorem that goes along with the trigonometric ratios that we've just learned. So what we've just learned, all of this, these things are called trigonometric ratios. Okay, cool. See you in the next video.